What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Dakota. I've just done so many takes of this video. You have no idea, but I'm just here to tell you thank you so much for supporting the show. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe to the channel. Leave this video a little like. Leave it a little comment. If you're an audio person, leave me a little five stars. Maybe leave me a little review. Whatever you can manage, it all means a lot, and it all helps. And go ahead and check out all the links I got in the description to support both myself and whoever the guest is this week. I always try to make sure that I leave links in the description so that you can follow the fighters once the show is debuted. And I hope you enjoy this episode. First of all, episode 105, we got Connor Coyle on the show today. Thank you so much for coming on, champ. Um, but I just want to start the show by congratulating you on getting a really exciting fight on a big platform that I think is finally worthy of your skill level and your talent. So congratulations on finally getting to that point. Yeah, appreciate it, bro. It's uh, It's been a long time coming. <laughs> it really has been, man. And I think for... Um, for a lot of the, the for some of the more casual boxing fans uh you being in this fight might be like kind of coming out of nowhere but if you've been following your career for the last couple of years like i like i've been fortunate enough to to commentate one of your fights and follow your career um it's not coming out of nowhere at all and i'm sure it's not for you no definitely not um it's, as i said it was definitely a long time coming you know we've had opportunities came to us um and then they fell through um, but basically just had to build myself right up to here, you know, and a lot of letdowns as well um, leading up to this time. But, you know, um, it's here now, so I'm going to grab it with both hands and, and make the, this opportunity count. What was that feeling like for you? Because the last time I, I I talked to you, we had we had just had the cancellation of the 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 Eubank and the Ben fight. What, you were going to be fighting Felix Cash. What was that feeling like for you to finally get that? that big opportunity on the zone to kind of replace or supplement what that opportunity was going to be. Yeah, I was, uh, I was really grateful. We, we got the phone call again and then we could come to terms of contract, you know, and we got what we wanted. Um, uh, and obviously it's on a big platform, you know, on the match room, the zone card. And especially now it's on Vegas, which, <clears throat> which makes it even better. So, no, I'm pretty grateful for that, and the excitement is just surreal. And uh, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to take it with both hands, and I'm going to go and I'm going to enjoy it and, and do what I do best. What do you, what, what what's kind of your take on him as a fighter? Because I've, and I've given him credit for it on this show. I think he's one of the young prospects that's kind of going out of his way to take challenging fights, be it Steve Rolls or uh, uh, Kieran Conway. Those are excellent fighters, guys like you. What do, what do, what do you think of him as a fighter? Well, I have to give him his props, you know, he's um you know, he's a young fighter, he's hungry and you know, and, and I know he's gonna bring it on February third. Um which is what I want, you know, and you know, we're both in the same we both want the same things. He's a little younger than I am, but I've put the the I put the effort in. I've I've spent time away from my kids, you know, I spent all these years away away from missing birthday parties, missing Christmases, you know, stuff like that, you know, and and I'm gonna make all that count come February 3rd and there's there's not enough fire in my belly to hold me back from producing what I know I can produce. And and as I've mentioned, he's already in his young career been in with some tremendous fighters like Steve Rolls, like Karen Conway. What do you think that you kind of bring to him as a challenge that he's never seen before? My boxing ability and my speed, my footwork. I haven't had the opportunity to prove what I can do. No one has actually seen what I can do. Um, you know, the higher opposition and that I'm in the ring with, you know, the higher I bring myself. Um, the same with all my fights. You know, if I'm fighting a lower class fighter, I'm going to bring myself to their level and just, you know, get the, get the fight over and done with. I've been the same in sparring. You know, if I if I spar a guy, you know, a journeyman, 
you know, I fight myself on that level. You know, I just I just seem to I switch it on when I need to switch it on, and I switch it on when it needs to be switched on at the right times. And I feel you're gonna you're gonna see the best of Connor Coyle um, when I'm and against Ammo. Do you think Do you think he's the best guy that you've been in with in your career? Well, on paper, um, and he's he's probably the only guy that I thought that uh, has the potential and he has the drive and uh, determination, same same as I have to be a world champion. So definitely, and I feel I'm I'm uh, well, I'm definitely the same as he fought. Well, them other guys might might uh, obviously wanted a world title as well, but I feel that I'm definitely the best opposition he's he's, he's come to face so far. I mean, this if should you win this fight, bro, this would be such a, a massive moment for your career that I feel like would really catapult you to another level at middleweight because beating a guy like Emma Williams at this point in his career, I just think that that would put you in a category of having one of the better wins of anybody at middleweight right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and I just have to keep focused and... And just stick to the game plan that we have for ammo and you know just go on there and enjoy it as well you know and take it around at a time i'm not going on there with um no i'm going to take him out of there in this round or that round you know i know what i have to do and i know that the, i know what i'm capable and my ability and my power and, and speed you know i have everything that can um that can demolish ammo's uh Whatever he has plans, whatever he brings, I'll be ready. Just let's just say that. What what in your mind at this point is kind of your path to a title? Obviously, it starts with beating Emma Williams, but the middleweight division right now has some inactive champions, which you know I've been fortunate enough to have some very talented middleweights on this show. Um, but in your mind, how do you how do you see that playing out, or what's your what's your strategy to get to that point? Well, I mean, no, I can't look any further than Ammo now in three weeks' time, um, 19 days now. So, I, you know, I'll, I'm focusing on that and I get uh, I get the victory with Ammo. Then the next step will be possibly um, challenging Lara then for the WBA world title. You know, and I'll just take it from there one fight at a time. But world championship, world championship fights is, is my goal going forward. Can you can you give a little insight because like like I had said, you know, I've been watching you for the last couple of years, but for some more casual fans, it may be like, you know, Connor Coyle's coming out of nowhere a little bit. Can you give a little insight into uh, you know, something that you'd feel comfortable sharing a behind the scenes struggle or just some of the things that you've had to go through in your career to kind of get to this point? Yeah, well, I'm um I'm coming under my eighth year now as a professional, uh twenty. 21s so with no losses and you know I spend a lot of time I'm based in Florida St. Petersburg and I live in Ireland I have three kids so I spend a lot of time away from them in these preparations leading up to all these fights so it's it's been 20 training camps you know and that's definitely hard hard on the minds especially you know and emotionally missing the kids I go away for anywhere up to 6 to 10 weeks at a time for each training camp and you know, it affects my family, it affects my kids, you know, they, they're they missing me. So that's definitely the hardest part. And that's, you know, when it comes fight night, all that stuff, all that stuff's built up in my mind. And I, and then I put, the, put that used to work. And then I know I'm flying home the next day to see them again. Do, do they have any, I don't know how old your kids are, but do they have any kind of understanding or grasp on what this moment means for you and your family? Well, my wee girl, she's, uh, she'll be turning eight. Now this month, or no, not February, sorry, the month I'm fighting. Um, so I've basically been away her whole life. I've I, I first came here when she was only three months old, so she's basically grown up and knowing that you know I leave all the time for fights. So she, she's in the days now, sure, where she understands it. My wee boy's three and a half. He doesn't understand what I'm doing. He knows daddy's away boxing. But he doesn't understand the concept of time and all, you know. So he's he's struggling a little bit because he doesn't know when I'm coming home. And then the other kid, well, he's he's not he's only three months, so he knows nothing yet. But in my mind, I'm still missing him. Obviously, <laughs> I'm missing all these moments. I'm growing up, you know. I'm yeah, I, th th I think that that's now. a that's a part of the game that so many people don't understand. Like, I think they think of fighters as like video game characters that have 
you know, this amount of speed, this amount of power, but it's, you know, you guys are all human beings that are making sacrifices to make these things possible for yourselves. Yeah, definitely. And as I said, that's, that's definitely, that's the main thing in my background that, you know, that, that I feel I'm sacrificing this family time. That's the main thing for me. I'll, if I, if things were different and, and, and I never had kids or something like that, it would be, I would have a completely different, you no, know, I would be probably living here in Florida full time. You know, and I could be a different. I could be somewhere different. I don't know. <laughs> what what's what do you what's your reasoning behind making that separation for your camps? Because I know there are guys that prefer to be around their family for the entirety of their camp. There's some guys that d think that that's uh, more distracting. More what what what's your rationale? Well, my reasoning for for getting up and leaving and, and going into camp is that that's that's why it's called camp. You know, uh, it's definitely. Every single minute of the day is is all down to the proper rest. You know, you're eating the right foods, you're getting the right rest at times. Uh, you're eating at the right times. You know, for your recovery, you're sleeping when you need to sleep. Back home, you can't do that if your kids run around. You know, you might be resting, but you know, you're looking after your kids. You run left, from, especially when you've eat right. You're up at two o'clock in the there, morning with one of them. They're sick. Crap. <laughs> yeah, um, it's just a lot of distractions at home. I feel you know stuff it. You don't think it's really affecting you, but see when you're trying to train or prepare yourself, like because I I do train at home as well, um, like I like like a pre-training camp, you know, before I come into Florida. So I, I I train with my amateur coach Kehar Duffy back home in Derry, and um, you know I I, I feel like the difference, you know, running the running doing school trips and picking up kids and running the parties and taking them here and going to gymnastics and you know just all that running around and you're not getting your rest and you're not eating at the right time so you don't have the energy to train you know it takes effect then after a while you know when you're when your body isn't recovering or getting the right rest right having to having to mix your real life with the with the with the lifestyle of camp yeah and in some sense i'm sure it's like easy it, it's more enjoyable for both because by the time you get home from camp you're thrilled to see them and while you're at camp you're able to truly you know focus on the task at hand yeah yeah definitely i guess the the last thing i'll ask you about your fight is what do you want to say to Amal Amma williams leading up to this fight i'm not gonna i'm not gonna um i'm not gonna throw any fuel on the fire or anything you know the fight does what it is um I just know what I have to do to prepare and I'm sure he's doing what he has to do or he can say whatever he has to say to get himself ready. But, you know, I'm a pretty humble guy and, and I know I know what I need to do to win the fight. So, you know, and he knows what he has to do to try and win the fight. So I'll just leave it at that. And the best man I won on February 3rd. Yeah, it, it, it really is. It, it's such a cool opportunity. I, I'm excited as fuck for you. You got two minutes to talk about one of the fights from this past weekend. Uh, the better be fight. Yeah, I think his performance was phenomenal. I thought it just anything he wanted to do, he was just so calm and relaxed. I really highly, I highly rate Calum Smith. You know, I think he's a great fighter. He's a great person. Um, and I did not expect that fight to go the way it went. Um, better be just. I know how good he is, but he shocked me against Calum Smith because I really, really highly rated Smith. You know, and I didn't expect the fight to go like that. Um, Callum Smith's a big, tall fighter. He's very fast jab and he's good movement, and you know he's his IQ is pretty good. Um, and I just did not expect it to go the way it went. But better be is you know, he. That's why he's at the top of his game. I think, and the thing about Smith that's always blown my mind is he has some of the most vicious knockouts you've ever seen in your life, and it felt like. He would throw these hard combinations at Better Beef, and he just catch him on the gloves. It was like he was hitting a bag of sand, like just no impact on him at all. Yeah, well, I think one of the guys I train with here in the gym, Hot Rod, light heavyweight as well, but a light heavyweight contender. I actually fought Better Beef a few years back, um, but he was brought over the a training camp there in for the August fight, and um, he was sparring with him. He was just in his hands, you know. They just have big thuds, you know, his punches. It just thuds, boom, you know, and he, and he breaks you down with those shots. It's not just one big shot that knocks you out, you know. It's just it's just him right in front of you. He makes the ring smaller every round, you know. He just, uh, just breaks you down, you know, round by round. 
Well, and I think uh, there's this m maybe misunderstanding that he's like a reckless power punch. He's like a very smart, calculated, relaxed fighter that just breaks you down systematically. Yeah. I think that's what's so impressive about him. Yeah, I think he's a bit like um, the tr Triple G. You know, I think that's what he done as well. He just broke you down, just cut the ring off, but just nowhere to go. And his shot selection was just always on point. You know, he hit you where he needed to hit you. They, they, they hurt you and... You know, it was obviously Triple G had not one punch knockout power as well, but I think it was just the sheer fact that he was just in your face all the time. Why, why he got so far as he did? It's just a lot to deal with. You know what I mean? It's just a lot to deal with. He's just touching you all the time. I think his jab is basically a power punch. Like mm -hmm. it's just, it's just a lot coming at you. Yeah, definitely. And now, great. It was a great, great fight. The common sense fight is him and Bevel as a, you know, as a, as a high level fighter yourself, you know, Bevel is a very s smart boxer fights in a different kind of style. What do, what, what do you see as, you know, the, uh, the prevailing characteristic? Do you think he's going to be able to do what he wants or better Bev will be able to do what he well, wants? Before that fight at the weekend, I, I would have had my money on Bevel. You no, know, I highly rate Bevel as well. Great, great boxer. Um, he's great, great ring IQ. Um, but I think just better beef, just the way he fights. You know, I I think Bevo like box him for a long time. You know, but I I think better beef could catch up him in the later rounds. You know, um, but that's a very very interesting fight. You know, I I, I can't pick a winner for that now. But it's like I, it's like a Spence Crawford level fight. Yeah, I I I can't pick a winner for that one, but it it'll be I know it'll be a no, it'll be a highly anticipated match. It'll be good. It'll be a great for you. Oh, I mean, and I could see a world where better beef hurts him to the body. I could see a world where Bevel is just jabbing the shit out of him. I could see better Bevel beef. just like boxing him, yeah, or, or better beef eventually landing and just cutting the ring down and, I don't know, hurt him body shots and slow him right down. I don't know. And it's tough to pick because better beef knocks everybody out and Bevel can kind of just win a 12-round uh, shutout against anybody. You know, even mm -hmm. guys that he could knock out, I think he just sweeps them twelve zip. So it's hard to yeah. it's hard to tell which which style is going to play out. I just think it's a fascinating fight. Yeah, hundred percent. No, uh, that fight's due to happen, isn't it? I think they're, they're are they on talks of it, or is it is it going to be as a saint? I, there, there's some sort of terms agreed, which I I I don't I don't like to rush to conclusions when I hear mm -hmm. terms agreed, but yeah. that that's what I've heard. But I mean, that fight has to happen now. You know, they're both they're both. They're both top of the game, so they have to have a matchup. And, th I, and I think those are the kinds of fights that just is good for everyone in boxing because you get you put together a matchup like that, people get excited about it. It brings on like a better undercard. You know what I mean? I just think it's better for all fighters when those kind of matchups get made. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I agree. So, once again, February third, correct? February third. Yeah, yeah. February 3rd on the zone, Coyle versus Williams. Connor Coyle, I'm very excited for you, brother. Is there anybody anywhere that you want to shout out before we wrap this up? Uh, shout out to my, my soon to be wife this year, <laughs> Ava, taking care of my two boys back home, um, and my daughter as well. Um, and all my local sponsors as well back home. I'd like to get a shout out to all my sponsors. Too many to remember they, <laughs> they shout out Kiss and Miss Any, but. Uh, and a shout out to my team, who's always there, um, doing all the, the running around and all the, all in, and the annoying stuff and the phones and stuff. So I'd like to shout out for them and for getting everything locked in and, and getting us ready for this fight. Well, I hope, to anybody who watches the show, I really hope you go check this fight out. I think you're in for a treat. Two fantastic fighters in their prime. Connor, thank you so much for your time, brother. I really appreciate it. Thank you, buddy.